This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available coffee, teas, chocolate, and other products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote and today's quote is, all coaching is, is taking a player where he can take himself. And that is from Bill McCartney. With us today in the studio, we have someone whose job is to take business people where they cannot go by themselves. He is with Action Coach, and his name is Steve Kiyama. Hello, Steve. Hello, Basil. How are you today? Good, how are you? Excellent. Excellent. So tell us what you do at Action Coach. <laughs> <laughs> do. I coach. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have guessed that. <laughs> you knew that was coming. Um, that question is actually, what do I do? I mm -hmm. take owners to a place they can't go. Mm -hmm. That's just a fabulous quote. Mm -hmm. um, a business is a funny thing. A, a lot of people have this perception of business as a craft. And it can be a craft, mm -hmm. and a craft is what gets delivered to the customer. That's right. But a business is really a money-making machine. Mm -hmm. And this is the little detail that a lot of us get caught up in on a day-to-day -day basis. And we forget that the opportunity is to generate a barrel load of cash mm -hmm. just by rethinking how we do our business. And so what I do is I help a business owner look at his business from a different angle. Help him look at his business through the, the, the lens of that this is for making money and what are, the, what are the activities that you need to be doing that make money for you. And not money for the business, but money for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I help people look at things differently. I help people ask different questions. I help people step up and step beyond what they've done before and, and, and look outside their comfort, do, comfort zone and, and actually step outside the comfort zone. So we can take people to a, um, a level of income that they've not seen before. Um, an ideal situation is take an owner to a place where he's not actually necessary in the business. Um, I was joking with a business owner last night she was describing to me, her. she's got a little retail business, and she has found her own way to a place where she's not necessary. She's actually able to sit back and enjoy an income without having to be in the store guarding the cash register. This is the kind of place that a business can go, and this is the kind of things that we work through to get a business owner there. Mm -hmm. this, Soccer coach. What's a soccer coach do? <laughs> soccer coach doesn't go out and play soccer. Mm. Soccer coach helps those players use the tools that they've got, the skills that they've learned, help them excel, help them combine their skills with other people, and make a good result come out of it. And we do the same with a business. Gotcha. So that's, to, in a short answer, I guess, yeah, that's okay, what okay. I do. Yeah. So now tell us then what process do you have in place or how do you go about it if you could? Excellent question. Mm -hmm. If you really sit down and look at a business, it's got some fundamental similarities business to business to business to business. So a business needs to know that it's making money. Mm -hmm. So we'll sit down and we'll actually look at how does the business owner know if he's making money or not and will help him learn his way through the standard statements, the standard accounting statements, and learn how to be sure he can make money. Mm -hmm. 
Um, if you don't know if you're making money, how do you know that a strategy change that you make is going to produce good results or bad results? Mm -hmm. A feeling isn't really good enough. Mm -hmm. um, how is the business owner using his time? So we'll sit down and look very closely at his time. We'll look at how he uses it and what value that brings to the business by using it this way or that way. And we'll adjust some of the priorities that he puts on how he uses his time. We'll take a look at where he wants to go with his business. I mean, why is he in this business? What's he hope to get out of it? And we'll make sure that we're there and we're going to pick strategies that point at that destination rather than at some other obscure place that he really didn't want to go. And it can make quite a bit of difference as to what his real plans are. Um, one business that I'm working with right now, their real goal is to open up four or five more uh, locations. Mm -hmm. And so we're focused on a set of strategies, not that make money, but that make time. Because they need the time in order to go out and open up more locations rather than spending their time in the uh, store itself. Mm -hmm. So it depends on where they want to go and we'll sit down and work up a plan for that. Mm. Once we've got some fundamentals in place, then we can sit down and take a real serious look at marketing. And, and this doesn't mean just lead generation aspects of marketing, but all the aspects of delivering services and products to customers and where does the money actually come from. And there's a, a fairly scientific formula that will take them through and step by step by step by step will show him how he can dramatically increase his, his income just by working at five basic things. And, and it's truly a formula that works for any business. Mm -hmm. There's only five variables in it and if mm -hmm. we make a small change in each variable we can make a big change in what he puts in his pocket. Okay. As we go from there we'll look at the things that um, as he's making an income we'll look at the things that help him develop a team and uh, the objective of the team development is, gee, now he can let go of his tasks and he can start to take control of his life mm -hmm. and enjoy his life. Mm -hmm. If I have an objective with a business owner to get him out of working long hours and get him into, you know, go on vacation with your family, come back in a couple of months and we'll see you. <laughs> that. that's, a, that's a real objective. And, uh -huh. and if, if we can get a guy that far, that's where it gets to be fun. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a guy that's really got the right picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. How did you get into action coach? That's an interesting story. Long, long ago, I started as an engineer. <laughs> good on system. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't start as a design engineer. I do have an engineering degree, and I started as an engineer in power plants, uh, commissioning new power plants, which it got me involved with customers, it got me involved with systems, it got me involved with equipment and craft. Working with training people, mm -hmm. working with helping people learn new ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. I did that for a while and had a really good time, um, but I had different questions, and I, the questions that led me into the commercial side of the business. And I wound up running customer service business within big um, industrial corporations. Mm -hmm. And so I had the chance to grow five different um, customer service businesses over about a 20 year period mm -hmm. um, in different kinds of technologies, all around lots of small transactions with lots of big customers. And that taught me an awful lot about um, what helps a customer, what doesn't help a customer, what good things customers like, what bad things they don't like, how to deal with all kinds of situations. Um, an awful lot of learning about marketing, an awful lot of learning about leading teams. And I had to build teams in each of those cases. As time progressed, I reached a point in my life where I wanted to go off and do something on my own. And I reached a point where I said, I'm going to buy a business. Mm -hmm. As I looked around, and I looked at an awful lot of businesses, um, I wound up looking at franchises. And with my search, what I did is I found th this particular franchise, which is Action Coach. Mm -hmm. And they had a set of systems that took all of the things I had learned the hard way mm -hmm. and prepackaged it with nice mm -hmm. templates, nice uh, promotional material, um, nice checklists, things that I can actually deliver to a client in a short period of time rather than having to invent it for myself. And I said, well, this sounds like a neat way to go. And um, well, bought the franchise and opened up shop and 
now I work yeah. with business owners instead of industrial companies. <laughs> Okay, good. How is Action Code? How would you, where do you stand compared to others, uh, franchises worldwide and in the country? And where do you position? Where, where are you guys situated compared to them? We've got, gee, globally, mm -hmm. we operate in about 50 countries. Okay. It was founded originally in Australia, although headquarters is now here in the United States. Mm -hmm. We have probably about 250 franchise owners here uh, in the United States, probably another 100 in Canada. Uh, let's see, Australia's probably got the largest number of them because of... Uh, started there. Yeah, started there and mm -hmm. has the most. Mm -hmm. Thousand of us scattered around the globe. Mm -hmm. Europe's got a pretty good number. We're starting to put people in the Middle East. Okay. China has a handful. Um, trying to think of where else we've got people. South America's got a few few uh, locations here and there. Mm -hmm. So pretty well situated. We consider ourselves the number one business coaching firm in the world. Okay. That is truly based on the number of uh, franchise offices. Mm -hmm. It's truly based on the amount of revenue we bring in compared to all of the other coaching organizations in the, in the globe. Mm -hmm which gives us the depth and the number of systems and the experience with applying those systems. And we truly do a lot of training. So there's an awful lot of interaction between the corporation and the individual franchisees. Mm -hmm. Wednesday I was in Baltimore and we had about 30 of us there all working on one training project. Wow. So it's a, a pretty constant process of development and uh, keeping us up to date. Mm -hmm. so, so we know what, how to best serve these people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I ask you a different question. What do you consider your biggest challenge in life? Biggest challenge in life, personally? Mm -hmm. Balancing work and life. <laughs> 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 work and family. Um, I get caught up in it. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I like working with people. Mm -hmm. So I get kind of passionate about um, Fred or Sally or Sue's got this issue, what do I need to do to help them? I get caught up in that and I can't let go of it. <laughs> so that, to me, that's a challenge. And letting go of that and going spending time with my family. I've got a 16-year-old daughter and that's where I like to, really like to spend my time, but yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> and what would you consider your biggest success? Oh, probably my 16-year-old daughter and uh, seeing her grow up into a nice young woman and uh, uh, she's doing some remarkable things in high school, but I don't think that's really the question you asked. <laughs> I think in a, on, a, on a professional basis currently, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for the action coach period of time, mm -hmm. um, I guess the one I'm most proud of right now is a uh, young woman who's running a business, a service business, that did one of my smaller educational programs a couple of years ago and she's managed to take the um, techniques and strategies that I've taught her and she's tripled the size of her business mm -hmm. and I mean tripled in terms of revenue tripled in terms of number of people she's got working for her in all senses of the word she has taken her business from a place where she didn't know where she was going to a place where she's having a wonderful life uh, she's a single mom and she's able to ba now balance the workload that she's got with her family um, fairly well. Um, I think she's just done some remarkable work just with a simple educational program. And oh. I think that's a remarkable statement to her. Definitely. Her ability to, and willingness to learn and step outside of her own comfort zone and do things she'd never thought of before. Mm -hmm. So that was, to me, that's the, the success that I, uh, that I really enjoy and when I look around and say that's a that's a person that I'm very glad I worked with um, mm -hmm. that was a person that really picked it up and really wanted to do something mm -hmm. uh, currently I've got a client who in less than a year we've doubled the amount of income he can take out of his business mm -hmm. that's good. yeah and that's another place to really sit there and think about is um, <clears throat> just, he's another person who's just sat there and said, I don't like what I'm getting, I mm -hmm. want to get more, mm -hmm. so let's try some things, and he was willing to step outside of the box and try the things and do the things and keep up with the work, and he's getting the results for it. Mm -hmm. We still got quite a bit of distance to go, but uh, he's, 
he's thrilled with what he's accomplished, and it's all been in less than a year. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, those are a couple of examples of those are places I'm really pleased of what we've accomplished, what I've been able to do, uh, what the contribution I've been able to make. Mm -hmm. And again, these are people. I mean, this is coaching. I'm not doing it for them. Mm -hmm. I'm helping helping them step out of, out of their comfort zone, mm -hmm. uh, helping them discover strategies, mm -hmm. uh, helping them discover how to apply those strategies to their particular situation, and that's just been a, a really fun experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've, I've had a, a long career, um, and I've had fun in each of the phases of the career that I've had, but I, I, when I think about working with people in this kind of a context, this mm -hmm. has been the best. This, is, this has been the most fun. Now, then I have a question for you. First of all, how do you think coaching is perceived in our world today? Interesting question. I, I'm kind of thinking it's not understood. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will think of coaching as consulting, and there is a huge difference. Um, I think some people react to the concept of coaching in the thought that if I need coaching, I must be broken. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd sit there and kind of challenge that thought. Mm -hmm. All of the top athletes have a coach. Mm -hmm. Now, did they get to the top and then get a coach? <laughs> I, get to coach <laughs> I mean, and even though they still have, coaches, they the yeah. I mean, if they got to the top without a coach, what do they need a coach for? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's let's be blunt here. <laughs> no, that's a really good question. I think a lot of people perceive the thought of having a coach as no, something wrong. as something's wrong with them. <laughs> Those are not the people I really want to work with. <laughs> the people I want to work with are the people that want a lot more, that are actually on the path to be successful, but want to get there a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. um, as somebody who th who's, a, who's scared of being successful, maybe that's, that's the real answer to the question. Uh, there are people who seem to be afraid of that, but uh, I th the, the perception question is a real interesting question. Um, a lot of people do seem to think it's a sign of a broken business, you know, kind of like the, the, the kids that need special treatment. Mm -hmm. and special <coughs> education. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And in reality, it's the opposite of that. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's a tool. You use a hammer to pound in nails. We well, use a coach to get you up over a comfort zone issue to get you to the next place. Well, I guess the fact is the top athletes, as you say, still have a coach even at the peak of their career, yeah. from the beginning all the way along. So yeah. I guess that should s s settle that issue. Yeah, it really. comes to that. Yeah, when you watch the Olympics, wh where does the player go right after they've done their event? They go straight to the coach. Mm -hmm. They don't go to their parents. They go to the coach. <laughs> <laughs> then they go to the parents. Then the parents after one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's because the the coach is the one that's really that's really looking into how do they do what they do. Mm -hmm. and, and at a certain level, you know, and a, a kid's playing a sport in, in, in elementary school, in high school, and maybe in college, the coach is a skill developing mm -hmm. tool. Gotcha. But past that, now it's beyond the skill developing, now it's, it's the mind, it's the focus, it's advancing the skills as opposed to creating the skills. Mm -hmm. It's um, the training regimen. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do this many push-ups, this many sit-ups, and what have you. It's mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And then how do we integrate that with the rest of the team if it's a team sport? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a, the perception's probably not in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> that leads me to the next question. Mm -hmm. Would you say that somebody has to be coachable for them to be coach? Yes. Very clearly, mm -hmm. uh, which opens up what's the what does coachable mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a huge issue. A person has to be open mm -hmm. to other people's ideas. Mm -hmm. A person has to be open to going beyond what he's ever done before, mm -hmm. and a person has to have desire for something more than he's ha ever had before, mm -hmm. and enough desire to be willing to admit that the way he's done it 
isn't going to take him there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an old phrase that w what got you here mm -hmm. won't get you there. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Marshall Goldsmith, who put that as the title of one of his books. Mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, all of the things you've accomplished today, up mm -hmm. to date, got you to where you are today. If that's where you want to stop, then that's where you will be. But if you want 50% more of whatever that is, uh, you're going to have to do something different. Mm -hmm. And what different will it have to be? Sometimes it's hard to decide what that is. Sometimes it's hard to know what those things are. And a coach can bring some insight. A coach can bring some depth of experience. One of the things I like about Action Coach is we have a thousand coaches. Mm -hmm. Well, that means I got a thousand people I can call up mm -hmm. and ask, have you done this before? Mm -hmm. How did it work? Have you done it that way? Mm -hmm. How did that work? Um, and we do this. We talk about this all the time. I'm on a weekly conference call uh, literally every week just to ask those kind of questions. Okay, so we're okay. constantly trying to advance the art that way. Mm -hmm. So does a person need to be coachable? Yes. Um, if he's not open and he doesn't have desire, it's That's no point. Idea. Yeah, it's no point. Okay. Uh, desire for what? Well, more money, more time. Mm -hmm. Why are you in a business? Mm -hmm. Did you start a business just to do an activity for a hobby? Or did you start the business to make money? Mm -hmm. So let's you know, get into a conversation about what do you want out of this mm -hmm. business? And then we can see if what, what matters from there. Gotcha. People that have problems with parents, problems with authority, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that's a little bit tougher. But uh, a person who has desire, a person who has goals, a person who just needs a little help getting a little more knowledge, boy, that's a very easy person to take to the next level. That's a person who wants it. Yeah, and they're fun. Okay. And the people I've described, the examples I've described, that's what, that's where, the, that was the characteristics of those people. Gotcha, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we have the fortune to have you at our expo a couple, couple, two or three times now, four, three or four times. Why don't you tell the audience how the expo went for you? What is the experience at the expo? I'm going to talk about this expo because I had a good time. Mm -hmm. This was a, um, a very good expo. The location was great. Yeah. It was a very open, mm -hmm. pleasant environment. Mm -hmm. It was uh, bright. It was cheerful. Mm -hmm. um, lots of good, uh, lots of good uh, businesses displaying their wares and a great group of people coming through the expo. Mm -hmm. um, I had opportunities to talk to an awful lot of good people. Mm -hmm. I would say very qualified and interesting people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I look forward to following up to a, with a batch of those people. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I already have some appointments set up with a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say this been, it was a great expo. And the cake was good, too, by the way. Well, I've got to have a little fun. <laughs> the cake was important. <laughs> it was a symbol of something. <laughs> oh, yeah, and it tasted good. <laughs> No, it was very good. I was, uh, I thought, I was disappointed that I didn't have somebody in the booth to let me go into and sit in in some of the presentations. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, on the other hand, I had a, a lot of really good conversations out in the booth. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay. Well, folks, you're referring to the expo we have having twice a year, and the next one will be on November 14. And you can see the website there on our screen, which is ultbizexpo.com. And we also have the breakfast event, by the way, and the website is blnbc.com, where you can come and join us. Um, yeah, I mean, we was most of us were really pleased with the expo. Oh, very good, very yeah. good. I liked it. it was we're going to have it there from now on. Now. Excellent. Okay, that was a great location. No, and I, I booked it for it. November. Booked it for uh, May. Good. 2015. Okay. Good. So we can have it there. Yeah, I've already talked to one other business and told them that if it's going to be in the same location, she ought to do it herself. Oh yeah. I, I, we, we, as you know, as we grew, we kind of like went around and around and around and around. Yeah. I really feel that now we are at home. Yeah. This is this of of the ones. I've been to, I think this is the best location I've seen so far. Yes. So this is very good. Um, Easy off the street, on mm -hmm. the same level, what have you. I mean, mm -hmm. and it has all the amenities. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like, wow. Yeah, no, that was, that was, it was perfect. I, I can't, 
I was going to say I can't think of very many times that I was without somebody to talk to, um, uh, some kind of a person coming through the booth that I had an opportunity to talk to. So mm -hmm. I think I made more contacts in this event than I have in a lot of events that I've been to. Oh. So and good contacts. I would say there were. Yeah, you know, the ones that I talked to, I would say there were eight or ten that were very interesting people that I want to get to know more, for one reason or another, either as a prospect or as a supplier, one mm -hmm. or the other. Yeah. One last word for the <laughs> audience here, Steve. One last word. Mm -hmm. Business is a money-making machine. Mm -hmm. If I had a piece of wisdom to share with your viewers, it's if you haven't figured out how to turn it into a money-making machine, start thinking about it now. Mm -hmm. If they want to have a conversation, I'm more than happy to sit down and devote some time to talk to them about how that can work. Okay. Uh, whether they work with me or not isn't so important. It's, it, but we operate on the basis of world abundance through business re-education. That is truly the vision of um, Action Coach. And world abundance really comes from the small business owner mm -hmm. and how he drives his business. Uh, it's very reasonable for a business owner to drive his economic situation to a very good place if he's willing to look at it as a money-making machine and not just a craft. Very good. Well, folks, you got it. You summed it properly. Again, you see our website there. I'm looking forward to having you tuning in. Uh, have a good night. I'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available coffee, teas, chocolate, and other products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well.